Hi, I'm Julia Stumpf, an Instructional Design Librarian at Ruth Lilly Medical Library. This is the second video in our Evidence-Based Medicine Diagnosis Series. In this video, we focus on pretest probability as well as test treatment thresholds. In probabilistic diagnostic reasoning, the probability of disease changes given a diagnostic test. How much the probability of disease changes depends on diagnostic test accuracy. As stated in the previous video, we hope this series will make probabilistic diagnostic reasoning a more explicit process for you. Let's say after talking with a patient and performing a physical exam, you suspect a patient might have a disease, but you aren't quite sure. It could be a number of things, so you decide to perform a diagnostic test to confirm your suspicions. You are using the probabilistic diagnostic paradigm. After speaking with the patient and performing a physical exam, you might assign a disease probability percentage. This is called the pretest probability. Then you run the diagnostic test and it is either positive or negative. The results of that diagnostic test will likely change your views about the likelihood that the patient has a disease or the disease probability. That number becomes the modified disease probability or post-test probability. As shown in the previous slide, you want to first figure out the pretest probability of the disease or how likely it is that the patient has the disease. So how do you do that? There are three ways that pretest probability is determined. Using direct studies of disease probability, which are studies examining prevalence of disease, validated clinical prediction decision rules, which are studies that are used when creating prediction tools, and history taking, examination, past clinical experience and judgment. The first two ways are based on research and the last way is based on clinical intuition. While the first two ways of determining pretest probability contain less bias, these studies are not common and prevalence information can be hard to find. Clinical intuition is a common way to determine pretest probability, but it is subject to bias and random error. When possible, it is best to use all three or two of the three ways to determine pretest probability. Once you figure out the pretest probability of a disease, you compare that with your test thresholds for a disease. Let's talk about what diagnostic test threshold means. Your patient can fall anywhere along a continuum of disease. If the pretest probability is below your diagnostic test threshold for a disease, you likely won't test. However, if the pretest probability falls somewhere in the diagnostic test threshold, you will want to test. Depending on the result of that test, the probability of disease increases or decreases. It is important to know that testing is only indicated between test thresholds, and test thresholds vary by disease and test. If the benefit of treatment is high and risk is low, test threshold might be small and the treatment threshold might be large, such as safe antibiotic to a patient with diabetes who possibly has a life-threatening infection. If risk of treatment is high, for example, treatment might be pneumonectomy for lung cancer, the treatment threshold is likely small and the disease probability is greater than 95%. When the risk of treatment is high, the probability of disease should be very high. The treatment threshold is the point at which the risk of not treating is greater than the risk of treating. For the rest of these videos, we will focus on pretest probability that falls within a diagnostic test threshold. We will also discuss how to evaluate diagnostic tests.